Well, hello today. Jesus, that's so loud in my ears. Continue. We'll continue being recorded. <laughs> um, so today we got Marcella Munoz at eight o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock for you, right? No, no, no. I'm an hour ahead, so that's why I'm okay. That's why I'm oh. <laughs> get all of these. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. for you. Okay, that's it's 9 a.m. for me. Well, first, how are you doing today? How are I'm you? Good. How are you? I'm I'm great. I mean, I'm on a little bit of a break, so I'm great. I am still doing a little bit of work out here, but um, overall, you know, my husband and I drove out here to Miami, and it's our first long road trip, so we're good. We're chill. <laughs> you said uh, Miami, right? Yes. So why Miami? Um, we have some great friends here in Miami and um, we're staying with them. We always try to make at least like one, maybe one trip out to them, you know, once a year or so. We haven't been able to with um, COVID and everything else. So now that we're all fully vaccinated and <laughs> things are starting to look up, we were able to take a trip down here. Oh, nice. Yeah, Miami is mm -hmm. Miami's beautiful. It is. All my family. It's been a little rainy, but even, Sorry, go ahead. It's been a little rainy, but even with the rain, you know, you, you get the sun every so often, and it's it's a treat. It's wonderful. My whole family moved to Florida a few years ago, and ever since then, they've been trying to get me to move out there. And is that uh, your plan? Hell no! I love Chicago, <laughs> even with the cold. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. That's yeah. how I feel about it. Even with the cold, it's Chicago, man. <laughs> well, that and Emily refuses to ever leave Chicago. She's more stubborn than me, but we kind of and agree on Chicago. I love her for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how, so for those that don't know, Marcella, she runs a theater, right? Mm-hmm. How did you get into that? I believe uh, your family had it, right? Yes, I like to say that I got into theater very organically, seeing as mm -hmm. my mother <laughs> is an actress and director, and she's actually the founder of Aguijón Theater, which is the theater that I work for. Um, Aguijón Theater, for those of you who don't know, has been around in Chicago now for, my gosh, I think we're turning 32 this August 22nd. Wow. Um, we are officially the oldest Latinx theater in Chicago, regardless of language, even though we produce all of our works in Spanish. That is our mission, mm -hmm. to produce Spanish language works. Um, and like I said, we've been around for 32 years now. And that is pretty much how I got into theater, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before we came to Chicago, I would go um, to my mom's rehearsals and, you know, just kind of there with her the whole time. I started also taking theater classes at a very early age. And then I don't remember ever making a conscious choice, like I'm going to be in theater or I'm going to be an actress or director or anything of the sort. It just, again, it happened organically. The way I see it, it's kind of like a, like a family business. If we had a, you know, a small sausage making shop somewhere, <laughs> we're all for something. we just happened to have a, a small storefront theater in Chicago's Belmont Craig neighborhood. <laughs> Do you feel like you would have fell into the family business if it was the different, like say it was like a restaurant or I don't know? Possibly. I mean, you know, when you're raised around it, like I said, it was a very organic thing. It was never something that was forced on me either. It wasn't like my mom and dad were, well, yes, you have to continue this. I just did it and I love it as well. So it was very, you know, again, it was a very easy, you know, e easy process for me. My daughter, who's 20, has nothing really to do with <laughs> the theater. It's not her field. It's not what she wants to go into. She did take classes with us and everything else and has participated, understands it, but it's not her path. So I, I think that, you know, if I loved it as much as I loved doing theater, if I loved running that sausage making shop, I probably would have fallen into that too. <laughs> Does that hurt a little bit? Like, you know, the next generation, your kid doesn't want it to be in theater? I mean, I would 
love for her to be there just because I love the bond that I have with my mother. You know, and it's not just mm-hmm. that she's my mom, but she's also my business partner to call it one thing or, you know, a collaborator because we work a lot together also in production. But um, I believe everyone has their own path. And I don't think that, you know, as a parent, I can force any of that on her. Again, this is also a labor of love. I don't think you can force someone into into any field, but definitely not the arts. It's something that you want and you love and, and you have to do. Yeah, definitely. Especially with like acting. Like I'm sure you've heard or know of like child actors that start young and mm-hmm. then get a little success and it like messes up the rest of their lives, I guess. It's very difficult, especially for someone who starts that young and then it messes with family dynamics when you have someone who becomes maybe even more successful than the parents and ends up being the, the provider for the family, it throws everything off. And yeah, when you're that young, maybe you don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that there's some people that know exactly what they want from an early age and they're child mm-hmm. actors and they're able to make that transition very seamlessly. But for a lot of them, it becomes a, quite a struggle. And I think that's part of it. The fact that maybe you are in something that wasn't necessarily for you, but that ended up being um, what you were kind of channeled into yeah 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 i totally agree like uh as long as it's a good thing you know let the child choose but i'm i don't know i'm a free spirit like that too yeah absolutely uh you said you got a meeting at nine right i do well that we have about an hour i think yeah 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 okay i just want to make sure so we start saying our goodbyes at like 8 50. i'm working on a, a production at um the goodman i'm co-directing the show for the summer so we're oh, having wow. production meetings starting now we're starting to you know work on costuming and things like that so there's meetings happening at all times <laughs> you're working on vacation marcella <laughs> <laughs> can you believe it <laughs> it's funny though because during you know covid there was so much downtime but still a lot of work um, you know, with proposals or just reading things and planning for when things reopen. And now that things seem to be getting back to some sort of normalcy, there seems to be a rush around everything, especially for um, late summer and early fall when things seem to, will be, you know, back to some sort of regular schedule. And now there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of work, a lot of meetings, rehearsals that are going to start happening. So it, it's been a, a little... It's been a little hard for me to get back to it, to tell you the truth, yeah. <laughs> to that kind of rhythm. Um, and I'm a bit of a homebody, so I did a lot of work from home. Anyway, I usually work a lot from home unless I'm in rehearsal or some other thing. But now things are starting to get back. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, all last year you actually stayed busy, like mm-hmm. with, uh, like you said, proposals, grant writing, filling out paperwork. Like, we did. We moved a lot of things online to we have um we have a, a monthly series at ID Porn where we invite actors, directors, other theater creators or writers um, to talk about their work or to give a little bit of a of a taste of their work. So we ended up moving that online, which was really, really interesting. We were able to reach more people from all over the world, which was great. We kept that going. We kept our after school matters program going online too. This is going to be our last session, I believe, uh, online. We're going to be doing the summer one online as well. Uh, and I'm hoping that by the fall, we'll be back in, in person. You have we multiple, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. You have multiple after school matters programs throughout the year or is it just the summer? Uh, no, we have them throughout the year. So we have three sessions. We have the summer session and then a fall, which usually starts somewhere around early October. And then we have a spring one, which starts around late. February or so and goes through about, you know, May something. Um, So we've been doing that online since last summer. Was that, or like, what was the difference besides Mm -hmm. not being able to like physically see the person in terms of like trying to direct over Zoom or, you know, rehearsals, I don't know. Um, I am a firm believer that theater needs to be done in person, but there were some really great things that came out of that. The the best thing that came out of that was that we're able to work then with teams from all over the city. Usually, obviously, it's limited to folks who who live a little bit closer to the theater. Like I said before, Mm -hmm. we're at Belmont Craig, and so we get a lot of 
of teens from near that area or some who can get to it fairly easily, maybe one short bus ride or something away. Um, by going online, obviously, we've been able to work with, you know, a diverse group from all over the city. So we have um, some kids who are coming from way north and some that are coming from way south, and it's been a really great dynamic. Um, at first, I would say, I remember the first day, I was very nervous and very apprehensive as to how I was going to really reach them. I felt like, am I speaking to anyone, even though, you know, everyone was on the, on the screen and everything else. But um, very quickly, we were able to get a really great communication and just being able to get everyone to talk to each other in this group. It created a, a really nice dynamic of we're all in this together, especially since it was in the, you know, last summer when it was the beginning of, of closing everything for us and going online. Um, and again, it's been really interesting just to get this really diverse group of, of teens into the same virtual room, talking together and creating together. It's just a whole another way of creating. Of course, I cannot wait to get back um, in the theater. And we put so much emphasis too in, in that, um, that personal contact with each other, being able to see each other, look each other in the eyes and really talk to the other actor on stage. So I can't wait to get back to that. Yeah, for those that don't know, After School Matters at Aguijon Theater is amazing. I did it once in 2013. <laughs> where I met Emily and we're still together to this day. That's right. So romance also happened. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was, uh, man, it's really been that long. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But uh, anyway, yes, everybody needs to check out. We actually have some spots available for the summer. So those of you who might be interested, go to afterschoolmatters.org and apply to the Nuestra Cultura Theater program. <laughs> Say that again. Go to afterschoolmatters.org. Angel has forgotten everything. He's a grown man now and not remember any of the steps to go through. <laughs> no, it's afterschoolmatters.org. And the name of our program is Nuestra Cultura Theater Program, which Nuestra, is what? Which is Nuestra Cultura. Uh huh. What does that mean? Our culture. I know how to speak Spanish. <laughs> Of you. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know how I ended up there. I really, I have no idea to this day. So you met Emily there. I thought you guys knew each other already. No. I, I, cool. And what's funny is I used to live like a mile away from her, like my whole life. That's, see, making connections at the theater. No, everybody's really cool there. Like <laughs> everybody's there to like act and have a good time mm -hmm. and if i'm not mistaken the kids get a check right they do which is great because it also works as a job and a training what's really great about after school matters and it started um, i think almost i think they're celebrating 30 years now we've been working with after school matters for 13 years now with our program mm -hmm. it always started off as an apprenticeship so you're going there to learn from professionals in whatever field you're in and they have not just theater, not just arts, but they also have science and sports and all kinds of other fields. And you're working with people who work in those fields and you're working exactly as, as an apprentice and it's a paid apprenticeship. Um, you get a stipend if you complete the, the whole program and everything else. So, and you can also use it to include it in your resume. Sometimes we get folks who are you know, 14, 14 years old. It's their first job to put it one way or another. And they are acquiring not just the experience in the field that they're working in, but also team building, communication, all of the other soft skills or 21st century skills that you can also include in your resume and talk about when you go for your first job interview. Or we also have a lot of teens, obviously, who graduate and they're going to college and they need a letter of reference. We are also a source for that. <laughs> that sounds like 100% positive. Is there like any but or any catch? <clears throat> or any catch like at all because that sounds um, like amazing the only catch is that it wasn't around when i was in high school <laughs> to be in an after school matters program but um i mean i, I think it's great again because there are so many fields available you can also mm -hmm. try different things you know a lot of times these programs are very expensive and pro prohibitive if you just want to go and take a theater workshop or a stem class or mm -hmm. be in sports training 
Um, and this is not only free, you're getting paid for the time that you're spending there. You're getting experience in the field and other um, references and things of the sort. So I really think that it's a, it's a really positive thing for teens. Again, you can try so many things. Maybe you try theater and it is for you and you stick with us for all four years of high school, do all the sessions. Or you're like, you know, hey, I tried theater, maybe not for me, but I want to try something in science or I want to try sports or I want to try pottery, whatever it is. There are so many things that you can that you can try through after school matters. I think it's a it's a really great program. It's a really great resource for um, city of Chicago teens. Wow. You said you've been working them for 13 years? 13 years. Wow. That's a long what was that 2008? Um, yeah, 2007, 2008, around then, we developed the um, Nuestra Cultura Theater program to kind of run parallel with some of our mission. And we started working with After School Matters, and we continued to develop it since then. As you know, there's also a language component. When we first started the program, it was all in Spanish. Mm -hmm. We had then more and more teens who were interested who maybe didn't speak the language, but were still interested in theater or wanted to know more about um, the Latino cultures and wanted to join the program. So slowly we moved to a bilingual or to an English program that also includes a language component. We always encourage folks who, if they speak Spanish and they wanna do a piece in Spanish to do so and we work with them and direct them in that way. Or if they are taking another language or another language is spoken in their home and they wanna include that as part of, of what they do, we encourage that because of course, language and culture is such a, a central part to what we do at Agni Home Theater. Yeah, definitely. I I don't know. I feel like there's some people that, you know, try to shy away from the Spanish, all the Spanish cultures. I think it's really important to embrace it and to like really dive deep into it, you know? Absolutely. And again, one of the, the joys of, of living in this country is that diversity, is that, you know, sometimes we, there is so much fear of that diversity. Like, you know, that's the other, and this is the way to be American or whatever it is. But I think that that is exactly part of it, to be able to dive into not just the Latino culture, but all of the cultures that are part of this country that really make up what is the American culture and who we are, right? So um, again, it's part of our mission at Aguijon. It's what we love. Uh, and we share a little bit of that with our After School Matters program. Yeah, that sounds so amazing. Like it makes me so happy to hear all this. I don't know. And you're getting back into in-person. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> um, something that you said is like super true. And some people need to like hear this is that like after school matters and like they do give a stipend. And that's really important because a lot of um, like internships are unpaid. Mm -hmm. or like who's gonna actually hire a 14 year old for anything right mm -hmm. so i don't know that that is important and it really does help the community and it and it's, it makes me feel good right here yeah and <laughs> you know folks labor should be paid also and it gets you into that important mindset sometimes especially when when i feel like when it's in the arts sometimes people think oh it's you know for the love of yes <laughs> we need to make sure that that's not part of, of the accepted ethos all the time. How do you feel about that? We will pay you with exposure sentence. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's difficult. I understand folks may not have a budget and there might be other ways um, to pay folks. It, it's, it's a very delicate balance, but I think as much as you can, you need to make sure that artists are being paid for their work. Definitely artists should be paid mm -hmm. and i feel like unless it's something so gargantuan like mm -hmm. taylor swift is gonna shout you out or like mm -hmm. beyonce then it's like no no just give me my hundred dollars <laughs> exactly and also have beyonce and taylor yeah swift. there you go you need all of it right exactly you need all of those opportunities um you went to college for theater no, I actually went to college for communication. Communications. Mm -hmm. So how, Emily told me that you were so into the business aspect that all through last year for the theater that you really didn't slow down at all. Like a, like a lot of um, 
what's the word? I don't know. Other theaters, production companies, like they had a really bad year. Mm-hmm. How did you stay the same or like do better? Well, the production aspect of it, obviously the putting on plays, what we do, right? Putting on plays for the public, that part had to come to a screeching halt. Like I yeah. said, we kept our programs, our training programs going online. We kept some of our, you know, uh, talk backs and things like that online. Production wise, though, we had to completely slow down. Now at Aguijon, I'm not only the core tester director, I'm also the managing director because again, of our, of our size, we kind of wear different hats, do different things. Mm-hmm. But um, just because the production aspect stopped did not mean that all of the other funding, um, doing proposals, planning ahead for once we did reopen, that did not stop at all. If anything, that kind of doubled in, in, in the work that was needed. There were a lot of organizations, um, thankfully, who did step up to the plate and did offer lots of support and funding for all theaters because they knew that if that stopped, if it were completely just tied to your production, as it often is, you know, you get a grant so that you can produce this show and you're going to mm-hmm. pay this with that money. If that continued to be the case during a year when nobody was doing any work, that would have closed, you know, all of the theaters in, in, in the city, country, world, right? But there were a lot of um, foundations had stepped up to that plate and started providing more general operating support, making sure that these companies were able to stay open day to day while all of this background work was getting done. Okay. So that was um, and continues to be a lot of work. And I think also foundations are changing the way they think about funding, which is which is great. And and it's a lot of work ahead, but at least that's starting. If I'm not mistaken. Production came to a halt, right? Completely. Completely. And- we actually closed. We had a show last year, which was um, running through March 15th. We were one of the lucky ones in that we ran up to that Friday was our very last show. And that very last show, we didn't really do it for the public anymore. We wanted to make sure that we had a good recording of it. So there were just like a couple of people we knew in the audience at that point. That was March 13th, I believe. We came back that Sunday, March 15th, which was the day we were supposed to close. And I'm talking about March 15th, 29. Yeah. And we just, you know, got the ensemble together. Everyone came in to pick up anything they still had at the theater. We kind of cleaned up a little bit. We had a little pizza party. We were hearing that the city was closing some things. There was starting to be some sort of curfew. We're like, okay, we'll see each other in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last time we were all at the theater as a group working or doing anything. You know, we have not yet been back. So it won't be until this fall when we open back up with a production and things of sort. But yeah, it came to a screeching halt. <laughs> that sounds exciting for this fall. Yeah, no, we are. We are very excited and I'm very excited for, for the show. It's one that we had a workshop production of in 2019. 2019, you know, it, it's amazing how things happen, right? You get a very, very busy year. 2019, we're celebrating our anniversary, our 30th anniversary that year. Things are looking up. We're getting, you know, grants for this, and everyone's congratulating us, and we're getting awards. And, and then 2020 comes, and it's like er, closed doors, right? We don't know what's going to happen. But in 2019, we were one of, I think, maybe nine companies selected by DCase, um, the Department of Cultural Affairs, um, wow. to produce something as part of the Year of Chicago Theater at Millennium Park. So it was kind of a, and we did a workshop production of a piece we've obviously never done before. We were developing, which is a a one person performance with live music. Uh, And I don't want to give too much away, but we were able to do the production last summer as a workshop production. We had three performances of it at Millennium Park. It was amazing. And it continues to be in development. And that's the one that we're going to reopen season with at the theater. So it's going to be live music. It's an exploration of of mainly Cuban music, music from the Caribbean and music as homeland because it's it's about an, an immigrant artist, singer who imagines herself, La Lupe, the, you know, the great Cuban singer and star. And through Lupe's biography and through her own biography, she kind of finds her way. And it's this idea of artists, immigrant artists who need to then reconstruct what they maybe had in their homeland and they come here and other jobs that they have to do and everything else to kind of get back a little bit to to what they were. 
and how through music, through art, they're able to find their home in a new place that's not always welcoming, that's not necessarily speaks their language, that doesn't necessarily eat their food, and they find themselves in the familiarity of that art that they did back then. Yeah, that's dope. And <clears throat> is that going to It's amazing because it's wonderful, you know. Because it's Caribbean music, what? Yeah. <laughs> So it no, it's 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 a party and it's also very touching. It's it's amazing. It was created and it's directed by Samba Menendez, my husband. The texts were written by Ryan Dukar, a wonderful collaborator and, and writer performer himself. And it stars the magnificent Ana Santos Sanchez. If you have not seen her either sing or act, you cannot miss the show. Right, what's the name? Let me look this up right now. Ana ke? Ana Santos. Ana Santos. Yes. She's an ensemble member at Aggie Home, and she has done some amazing work. And those of you who saw maybe the workshop production at Wrigley Square in 2019, you're in for a treat because it has grown and developed into a really, really visual and auditory, uh, just a treat. Is that going to be at Millennium Park this year? Uh, no, we're actually doing it at the theater for the first time. Like I said, the Millennium Park was a workshop production. We also did a little a taste of it at um at a fundraiser that we had for I'm at the end of 2019 mm -hmm. and something that we did to close out the year of Chicago theater at the cultural center through DCase. And this is the first um, time that we're going to have it at the theater and it's the world's premiere. It's gonna oh, snap. Yeah, we're excited. It's gonna premiere actually as part of this year's the Stinos International Latino Theater Festival of Chicago, which is produced by the Chicago Latino Theater Alliance. This is our this is fourth or fifth year already. I have to count how many productions we I think it's their fourth. <laughs> uh, and it's their fourth year coming back. Um, last year, we actually had a little bit of a taste of this production during the Destinos Al Aire show that they had. Wow. Yeah, let well, me know. I want to go. Year. This is their fifth year. Hold on, let me see. We, we've done. Uh, this is their fifth year. Plata has been around for five years and they have produced five wonderful Destinos um, theater festivals. This is going to be their fifth year. Wow. And you know, Chicago's reopening, the world of, of theater is finally coming back and we can't wait to be a part of, of Destinos again and to bring this world premiere of La Gran Tirana. Wow, nice. I'm excited. Let me know, I wanna go. Absolutely. You have, to. you have to. <laughs> Do you work with um, specifically smaller um, playwrights or do you do a little bit of everything? Um, at Aggie Horn, we do a little bit of everything. We have run the gamut from the classics of universal theater, you know, Greek theater, mm -hmm. uh, all the way to contemporary Chicago Latino playwrights. Um, who are having the world premieres at Aguijón. So with Aguijón, we have really run the gamut of, of all of it. And, and we love to explore all of it. I think that's also part of what we do, this idea of as artists, as creators, we do not have a specific um, limitation or, or border, right? You know, sometimes a lot of Latino artists just seem to feel or are kind of prevented from being a part of certain productions and that's not the case with us there's nothing that doesn't call our attention that we want to explore that we feel is limited to us so we run we run it off plus you're our, the boss right you can kind of do whatever you want yeah yeah <laughs> um and you know our our mission is that we're going to do it in spanish if we have a bilingual production or if we decide we want to do a bilingual show we have we might have shows in english on saturdays or something and then the rest of the days in spanish as long as our and we're true to our mission to continue to producing works in Spanish. Wow. That's, oh man, I don't know. That's, that's, that's so cool that you can like do what you love, you know? But that's to be fair, you are a busy person. I am busy, but I am also a happy person. So <laughs> with what I'm doing. And I think that's the key to be able to find what you love and figure out a way to continue to do it where you're able to make your living on you know with it and to continue to feed that need that you have whether you are in a creative field or whatever field you're in that you're loving what you're doing i know that sometimes that's easier said than done but um it's 
it's worth to pursue it. Would you ever be interested in directing like a film or TV? Um, I'm not sure. I love um, directing theater. Uh, I actually just helped someone do a little video not that long ago, and I actually enjoyed that storytelling aspect of it. Um, obviously, with a, with someone you know doing the camera work and knowing exactly, you know, but I kind of had an idea of what I wanted that to flow and everything else. It's not something I have too much experience in. On the other side of the camera, I've done some work, obviously, in front of it, but mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I I love theater, but I don't like to ever close any doors when it comes to creating. So if somebody somebody from uh, Hollywood pulled up Tagui Hone in like a big uh, limo, they'd be like, yeah, "Look, yeah, thank you." Like I said, <laughs> <laughs> like Marcella, we heard about you. A million dollars produced this movie. I will think about it. <laughs> Damn, that sounds. I don't know. I, I think I would do it, even if I have no experience whatsoever, which I don't. If somebody offered me a million dollars to like direct. I think as long as you have a point of view and the story you want to tell. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, a lot of bad movies come out all the time. This is true. I could just be one of the, one of many. Or you could be that great one. You never know. <laughs> oh, the uh, you remember like Sharknado, something like that. Sharknado did very well. Yeah, Shark that's what I'm saying. It did well, like financially but like the movie yeah no no <laughs> or like the room with tommy what's his name Wiso. do you know who that is what is it called the room i feel like i've heard the room it's <sighs> i don't know how to explain it but you kind of it's <sighs> you gotta look it up it's it's one of those really bad movies that's like a cult that has like a cult following. Uh -huh. I'm gonna have to check it out. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, I drank no coffee today. And I woke up at five in the morning because I was so stressed. Like, I'm not gonna oversleep. I'm not gonna oversleep. I'm not gonna oversleep. So I've just been up. Sorry about the early rising. Is it sunny out there right now? Uh, no, it is all gray outside. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that because it's raining here and I would hate to think that there's sun in Chicago right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, what's, uh, what's coming up in the future after this fall? You got uh, plans? continue to work and I always feel like putting one foot in front of the other and continuing to work is is the plan <laughs> do you think you'll ever retire you know it's funny because they asked my mom that the other day or once they asked her that and I loved her answer for it. she said you know I don't know I don't think so because one retires from jobs not from passions so <gasps> <laughs> I love that and I I steal that from her because I think that's a, that's a great way to put it. Again, if you're doing something that you love and it doesn't, I mean, it is work, but it doesn't always feel like, oh, the thing that you have to do and that you have to retire from. Sometimes you feel like you're retiring from a job to then get your life started or to then do something that you've always wanted to do. Uh -huh. If you're already doing something that you've always wanted to do, if you enjoy it, then yeah, it doesn't feel like this job that you wanna at some point find a stop so that you can do something else or you know get something else started. So I love the way she put that. I love that she says you retire from jobs and not from passion. As the kids say, that's a bar. <laughs> I don't know if have you heard that? I'm not that young, so no, I have not. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things that I love about doing after school matters. <laughs> it keeps you it keeps you hip. <laughs> it, it keeps you in some sort of loop. Otherwise, who knows what I'd be saying? <laughs> it's rad. <laughs> it's radical, bro. <laughs> I don't know. But ASM keeps me in some sort of youth loop, at least. <laughs> but yeah, as the kids say, that's a bar. You don't, <laughs> you don't retire from, or you retire from jobs, not passions, because you yes. retire from your job to chase your passion. Yeah, usually. So, yeah. I don't know. Probably not retiring <laughs> anytime soon. 
is there any like um well actually let me word it like this where do you draw like your inspiration from in terms of like as a director actor managing the whole the whole theater um i don't think there's any one particular thing just everything that surrounds me you know you can go anywhere and find inspiration anywhere something someone says something someone does um i'm inspired by frankly also the people that i work with at the theater i'm very inspired by by sandra my husband i think he's you know creative and and i think and i hope that we inspire each other in that way so really um as an artist i think you always have to kind of be open to everything that goes on around you and be inspired by by everything you don't know there's a kitty right here. Oh no! Wait, let's show her. She's gonna bite me or something. Cause you know how cats. Aww. Uh, I have a cat at home too, and he wouldn't even stand for this. He would have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I love cats, but I'm allergic. Like really allergic. Like eyes get big, mucus <laughs> starts flowing. But it's like, but they're so adorable when they're not yeah, scratching you. Yeah, when they're not, well, see, my daughter, Isabella, brought a cat into our house last year, like a tiny little... Like a little you know, kitten? A little kitten. And of course, we're like, no, 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 we don't want a cat here. We have a dog. We're like, no, no. And of course, this thing was so little and so cute that eventually he stayed, and now he's basically our cat. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's how it always is. It is. But he always had attitude. I mean, he came in even when he was little, tiny, he would bite. At that point, it didn't really hurt. Now it hurts. You know, he can only be pet for whatever he wants, however he wants it. The also, man, he's got like a tood, like, look, lady. He has a tood. He has a tood. And he's completely terrified. <laughs> he's like a big German shepherd, black lab mix, and he's terrified of him. So if he wants his bed, he'll just walk up to him and kind of stand there like this. Really? And Oh, and walks away and leaves the bed. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. He owns the place. He walks around like he owns a place. He's now just a year old. Like, look, lady, I need seven back rubs, no more, no less. <laughs> Whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. My dog is kind of like that too. Or no, Emily's dog is like that. <laughs> like, hey, let me get on the table. Hey, I know yeah, you see me. <laughs> whatever they want they're obviously in charge <laughs> yeah. well marcella i appreciate the time i am gonna go back to sleep thank you so much angel for having me in your podcast and your program it's been really fun to chat with you even though it was super early not for me though. not for you <laughs> you know what's funny is no, some... oh go ahead it was great and i love seeing you even though we're not in the same room but at least i get to see you like this and have a little chat with you yeah it's been a long time i haven't seen you since like 2018 i know or like, we have to see each other just fall back at the theater or something i will for sure go i live with emily and you know she lives like 10 minutes away yes and she's a huge lover of the theater and we love her there too. She's definitely a person for <laughs> art in general. Like, definitely. she's really about it. What was I going to say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of these episodes go for like three hours. <laughs> We're not going to go for three hours. Woke up at <laughs> five in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. Thank um, you. Check out Aguijon Theater on Central. No. Laramie. On Laramie. Laramie. Mm -hmm. Diversity in Laramie. Yep. Very close there. We're like, I don't know, a block south of Diversity. Yeah. 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 On Laramie. So come check us out. We'll be back open to the public um, in October. In October. Mm -hmm. I'll be there if anybody wants to mm -hmm. hang out with me. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, have a good rest of the day, Marcella. I'll let you know when this is up. If you want to listen back to it or something, I don't know. Perfecto. To say what? Perfecto. Gracias. Ah, de nada. Bye, Marcella. Bye. Say hi to Emily for me. Oh, for sure, for sure. Bye. Bye.